Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today I'm going to continue my series on minimalist overlanding tools uh, for basically getting the most with the least or the lightest. Um, and I've also decided I want a full tool kit that I can easily lift with one hand. Now, of course, that's relative to how strong you are, but I see a lot of tool kits that are, I'm not sure you could lift them with two hands. Often they take two people or some of them you just don't lift. I mean, they're like built into the vehicle in drawers and boxes and things. Um, I want the minimal amount of stuff for overlanding. I'm not rock crawling. I'm not doing hardcore off-road uh, work. I, I have a whole set of tools that I will bring um, if I'm doing something like that, but... You know, I'm not bringing extra CV joints. I'm not bringing extra axles, U joints. Um, I'm I have solutions for some of those problems, but more than likely, I I'm just going to count on not encountering that problem simply because um, there's no end once I start going down that road. Um, and basically, I'm going to be on roads. And they, those roads might be rough dirt roads, but um, I. I need to be pretty much self-supported or at least, you know, worst case, you know, limp back um, as best I can under whatever power I've got. But I'm not, I mean, that's part of overlanding. That's why we do it. So anyway, what I've decided is to lay out a handful of tools um, and show you what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to get rid of, and what decision I'm making when there's a choice. And I'd like you to participate by telling me what I'm missing um, what's essential, maybe I've got some overkill, maybe there's a double use for a tool that I'm not realizing, um, and uh, let me know in the comments. So my general hand tools, let's start over here. Um, first of all, I wanted to mention that I often carried a, in the screwdriver video, I carried a uh, orange handled old school snap-on screwdriver. I use this for everything. I've used it for prying a door frame when the wind blew it open and bent it. I've used it for loosening frozen windshield wipers. Um, it's just a real handy tool. I like the orange, um, and I've just had it forever. I did replace the, or have the snap-on guy replace the shaft at one point. Um, but that's always handy, so I'm always expecting this is going to be around. So it, it, it won't be in the toolbox. It'll be right up front with me where it always lives. I have carried one of these in the past. I'm not going to. Um, just a big striking um, Milwaukee kind of screwdriver, conduit cutter thing. Um, but that one's out right now. Uh, let's see, uh, pr big pry bar. Um, this is an 18-inch snap-on striking pry bar. The reason for this is, you know, for all my, my breaking, bending, prying needs, and you really have to have something about this size for it to count um, uh, for what I'm going to be doing. I can use smaller ones. I have little, you know, a little tiny one. I have medium-sized ones, and I have even bigger ones. Um, these are super handy, but, you know, this is really close to this. I don't know. I'm, I'm more interested in, you know, one that does it right. And there are lots of other uses for this. I can use it to stake down an awning. Um, I can use it to move rocks. Um, and of course, you know, anything with steering linkages, you know, sometimes you need some good prying. Um, anything else, work with tools. Sometimes I can press down and lift a tire, you know, if there's um, some reason I need a little extra help. So you've got to have at least, to me, an 18-inch one. But um, any more than that, and I start getting into some, some issues of being able to actually use it because it's too long. Um, a hammer. This particular hammer uh, is the S-Wing Pro. I noticed this one's made in Taiwan. Um, a couple of things I like about it. One, it's a one-pound head, but it's got an extra long handle. In fact, I compared it to my larger uh, S-Wing and noticed that when I line them up, if I line up the heads, this is a really long handle, especially for its weight. Plus it's wood, so I've cut weight there. And I've also um, given myself you know, a, a pretty good length for swinging to maximize the amount of impact when I need it. Uh, the grain on this is stellar, if you look at that. Really nice, lines up. That's something you always want, um, is to have the grain, if you have a wood handle, align with the uh, directional use of the tool. Good, solid. Um, simple design. I've had great luck with S-Wings in the past. Um, plus, I guess I, I could emergency fire starting if I want to scrape off some of that. And um, I have seen a lot of people who carry, especially, you know, overlanding and off-road, you know, big heavy hammers, especially drilling hammers, sledgehammers, etc. This is a four-pound. 
great hammer. Um, I've even seen people who carry a couple of these. I mean, if you got a big box, you're going to put tools in. It's easy to just throw tools in, but this is just dead weight. You don't want that in a rollover. You don't want that, you know, for, for having to, uh, lug it up and down hills, reduces mileage, is hard on your suspension. It basically causes your vehicle to, uh, you know, to, to handle differently um, when you start adding a lot of weight, especially way in the back. Anyway, there's no reason to have uh, this for my use. I mean, sure, if it was free and, I mean, pick it up whenever I needed something like that. But overall, no, um, I'm going to hopefully not need anything like that. Um, my knife, I'm going to always have a utility knife simply because I don't want to beat the heck out of my um, EDC knife that I'll, I'll always be carrying. And I've gone with the Milwaukee Fastback. This is a, I don't know if this is MIM, some kind of a metal here. Um, it does have the cordage cutter, which is uh, probably going to be used a bunch um, overlanding. Standard push button design, one hand operation. Um, what I like about this is I've got blade storage, and you might notice something about those blades. They are all swapped out um, with Fiskars. Somewhere it's written on there. Yeah, I can see it upside down. Fiskars blades. And these blades, um, I've got a reserve of five of them here. Made in USA. These are the, the uh, Carbon Max blades. Um, so far, they're the ones that um, I'm most impressed with. My two options uh, I was going to load it with were either the DeWalt carbides um, or the, uh, the Fiskars Pro Carbon Max. I've gone with the Fis Fiskars in this case. Um, something kind of interesting, I was actually, you know, this is my favorite knife of the uh, folding utility knives, just in, in terms of ergon ergodynamics, the fit in the hand, the use, the features. Um, the guy who invented this knife, who designed it, the engineer actually contacted me because he found my YouTube video about it and told me I pretty much nailed everything about it. He did agree you know, with the complaint of the pocket clip, but they were trying to make it seat in the hand more than carry well on the pants. Um, and uh, one of the things I had mentioned is the kind of the curiosity of the square and the blade. And he said that was strictly in manufacturing. That was nothing to do with any operation of the knife, any special features or anything, just in manufacturing. What I like it for is um, I actually had a, Sna a Stanley blade slip into the mix here. Um, and it was easy to tell because I couldn't see through the square. So if that's worth something. Um, so Fiskars is out. Uh, the next thing is this snap-on pry bar. This is just a little plastic one, super light, um, good you know, palm pushing aspect here. But a lot of times I'm trying to space uh, or, or get inside in between dashboard components. Um, I might be trying to seat wiring around upholstery or, you know, along the ceiling of the truck, say dash cams, uh, CB uh, antenna line, things like that. Um, and often I'm using whatever. I've even gone out and just whittled down a stick and tried that. I'm trying to stay away from metal. This would be an obvious use for that, except I don't want to damage anything or score a wire. So um, I find myself always wanting just a little plastic bendable thing. I've used, you know, fake you know, the plastic utensils, things like that. I'm just going to do it right. Um, along the same line here, little tiny. Uh, this is the Snap-on uh, magnetic mat. It's great for both holding tools to things. Um, say I wanted to, you know, I could easily hold something to my vehicle um, and use that. Um, even upside down, want to be careful. I, I don't leave it there, but um, it works for that. And of course, anytime I'm pulling screws out of something or bolts or fasteners, nuts, etc., it's a great thing to, to put them somewhere where they're not going to roll away or disappear in the mud or whatever. Uh, this is a, a small multimeter, little um, craftsman. Basically, all I need is continuity um, and a, AC and DC volts. Um, the voltage for DC is obvious with the vehicle, but also AC if I'm using an inverter. Or I, you know, I've got some other appliances that might run off of the 120 inverted in my camper. So that's this is a good testing rig. Plus, real easy to test fuses, things like that. Um, anytime I leave, I always make sure that my battery is um, probably replaced. Let me click it on here. You can see right there, it's ready to go. Brand new battery. Um, Next, here's my blue point. Um, this is un universal pickup tool. Basically, it's a long magnetic shaft. Um, it, 
the way, especially if you've got skid plates on your vehicles, there's really no way to get inside them if you drop something other than reach in with some, like a magnetic pickup tool or, you know, drive it up a hill and hope you can roll it out, whatever <laughs> fell inside there, essential. Plus this actually can be used um, to hold bolts or nuts or something. You know, you can see I've got a nut on here so I can reach in and screw it on if I can get this thing in to get it started, threaded. Love it for that. Um, and I leave a, a nut on here simply because then it reduces the chance that it's going to stick to something really well and yank it out of my tool kit when I'm not looking. Um, or, you know, if I grab this, it pulls out other stuff. So I am going to choose a specific nut for that purpose. This is more of a demo nut here. Um, just to show you that it just increases the, the distance from the magnet, which is enough usually to kill the, um, kill the magnetic uh, strength. Uh, wire brush. Oftentimes I need to clean threads, clean off fasteners, you know, get a socket on it, clean surfaces. Uh, might be looking, is that a fresh oil leak? I'll need to scrub it down, um, you know, and then watch it. it just, they're essentially disposable. Um, then this area up here is really important. Otherwise I'd have a snap on in my kit. Um, but I just find that wire brushes uh, come in very handy for a lot of different chores, just getting things prepped. Um, this is a chisel. It's a half inch snap on. You want a good quality one. I've had Stanley's just fall apart on me. This particular guy is kind of the happy medium. I have wider and narrower. Uh, chisels are great for spreading things, breaking things, um, you know, busting off edges of, of things when they're not of any use anymore because of whatever you did with it. Like rounding corners, cracking fasteners, works as a tent stake. Um, they also work for prying and spreading metal components um, hand in hand with the, uh, with the handle or with the hammer. Um, a good solid pencil that won't roll away, bright orange, pre-sharpened. Oftentimes I'm writing on components or even writing on stuff as I take it out, maybe directional arrows. Um, and I've just found that having a handy pencil is important. Uh, tape measure. Now, a lot of people carry a big tape measure. I wanted just a super light one. Basically that, uh, both in metric and in inches, I like this Milwaukee. It's one of my favorite small ones. I think I may have done a video on that. Um, sometimes I have to measure the width height. I need to, you know, fabricate something. Um, occasionally we have to, you know, uh, make reservations on, on ferry transport or something like that. And I need to know exactly how high or how wide or how long, uh, the vehicle is. Um, you can use it for guessing at, at uh, fastener sizes as well. It's a lot easier than using either two marks on a piece of cardboard or, um, you know, measuring out a piece of string or something like that. And remember, there's a lot of other uh, applications where you just want to know. I mean, that's why Leatherman puts, I think, uh, the ruler on all their tools. Uh, you just want to know uh, approximate. Let's say I need a fastener and I don't want to pull out the one that's on there and I swing by a hardware store somewhere and when I'm in a town, um, I can actually have some pretty good measurements and I can double check in the store because as we all know, things get moved around. Um, for a light, it'll be this Milwaukee. This is on the heavier side, but it's also so incredibly useful. Um, it's got three different modes of lighting. It's got the battery indicator um, and rechargeable, rechargeability um, using micro USB classic there. Um, very strong magnet and the magnet's important because um, a lot of times that's how you, you seat it in your workspace um, and then, you know, adjust it um, in order to see depending on the kind of light you want. And it's, it's also got kind of more of a, um, uh, a spotlight as well um, as area light. You can see that hot spot. Um, so I like this. I will probably have my Klein as well. The Klein um, is in a different kit, but I really like these. It doesn't have any kind of spot function. So if I need to look a distance away, you know, or if I'm scouting, you know, overhangs or something like that, this is going to be um, more like the tool I'll need compared to that. Um, let's go hacksaws. Got to have a hacksaw. This is the one I've settled on at the moment. It's a snap on. Not just because it's a snap-on. Um, I like the uh, the blade space here. Some of the uh, less expensive ones give you less blade control. If you notice this bolt here, that always loosens up. It's just barely grabbing a blade. Um, and that's how it's holding this whole thing together. You know, a little bit of confinement here and then that. Um, 
Here's a, another one. These are both Stanleys, these two here. Um, this has a, a pretty narrow spot. I have run into, you know, some situations where that's a little too small. If you look at the, the length of being able to grab and hold the captive part of the blade, um, that's where a lot of the force is. The only reason you'd want a small section here um, is because as you, if you bust your blade, you can actually drop a smaller section in because it's from here to here um, that I need that amount of blade. So basically I could break my blade in half and it would still work. Um, this one I might be able to go into thirds and I've also got a, if you look, I've got a much longer blade on here. Sometimes reaching out way up into things works, but it's also very easy because of the way this is confined. Um, just right here, as it holds it, I could literally go out about that far and still be able to reach up and cut something. So fabrication's important, uh, you know, pound it into shape. Now, what about a better one? Um, oh, also the snap-on blades are great, Swedish steel. Um, so I'm starting out with a new, very high quality blade. Uh, Milwaukee makes a few. I thought about, you know, this is just heavy. It's really nice, but this is more of a shop garage tool to me, you know, or if I'm going to use it a lot in plumbing or something, well, because it's just got a better handle than this. Um, but I don't want to carry the space in the way to that. I thought about going with, you know, a bunch of different types of blades and snap them into a handle. That's got potential as well, except I'll have other kinds of saws. Um, and I don't know how many extra blades I'm going to take. You know, am I going to be, you know, taking out nail embedded wood? Um, so I've decided, you know, that's going to be plenty good. Um, I have worked with a whole bunch of different kinds of blades as well. You know, DeWalt Bimetals, Ace, various hardware store blades, Lennox blades. Um, you can see, you know, all the way down to made in China blades. Um, and I'd rather just have one really good blade. I haven't decided if I'm going to carry a second blade or not. I don't think I've ever worn one out on a trip. Um, and if I do, what am I doing? You know. Anyway, next thing, last thing maybe, um, is scissors. And, you know, as much as I love these sea jets um, with both strippers, crimpers, you know, cutting tools, etc., um, I... I'm really not bringing much in the way of electronic stuff because I'm really not working with electronics that much. And if I do need to strip or cut or, um, or crimp something, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And that's going to get me out because I don't want to carry electrician's tools that I hopefully will never need. I mean, I'm not going to rewire a camper. Um, and so what I want is good snips, good shears. They do come in handy for form fitting things, first aid, uh, modifying um, canvas, upholstery, all kinds of stuff. And these are the ones I used to carry. Um, I thought about the Knipex, but they're a little bit too limited because they're, they're more designed as, you know, cable cutting tools. You know, if you look at that big spot there and they've got serrations all the way out to the end. And sometimes I don't want the serrations out there because it can give you an imprecise cut in some ways. Um, it does hold the workpiece much better. But then also I've got about one total inch of actual um, cutting length here for any kind of a smooth cut. Because this won't, this will this will kind of chop it. Um, so what I'm going to do is go with these. These are my Vamplier. Um, if you read the... What they are, they are the Super Combo Scissors, made in Japan. I love these things. Very simple. Um, they have a uh, wire cutter down here if I need that, similar to the back of my C-Jet. Um, if you notice, they've got uh, long cutting teeth here, but I have um, both serrations and right up front, um, just a, flat, a straight steel uh, edge. Um, super light. I don't know if there's a... This is kind of interesting. I'm not sure what that's for other than maybe reducing some mass, which is always good. Um, and then bright color. So I really like those. Um, so that's my scissors. So essentially I've whittled everything down. So I've got just these things in my general tools. Everything else is going to be kind of in a specific category. Um, and that's that. In fact, this is going to go up front, so there we are. That's it, right there, the whole thing. If there's something missing, let me know. If there's a substitution you would highly recommend, let me know. Obviously, you know, if I think I'm going to be using a multimeter, 
Um, I do often carry my Klein, um, and I, I don't think I'll be using it, but there are just a few times um, where that may be handy. The rest of this, uh, I think I can do everything. I could build anything with that. Let me know in the comments what you think. And with that, Doc out.